Welcome back. Now for your five-day weather forecast, we go outside to Rob Sykes. Thanks, guys. The sun is shining through today, and yesterday's winds are long gone. <laughs> Shouldn't see any flurries today, and we should see a high of minus four. Let's have a look at our five-day forecast. Enjoy the sun while you can, though, as tomorrow will bring some light rain. We'll have a high of four, though, and a low of minus four. Saturday, we'll also see some light rain. We've got a 70% chance of that, but the high will move to six and a low of only zero. By Sunday, that rain will turn to snow, and it will go down to minus two with a low of minus seven. And on Monday, we'll get some cloudy periods where the sun will be back, but we'll move around more to a day like today where it's about minus three. And by Tuesday, it'll be back up to plus two with some sun. That's all for weather today. Now back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Rob. Now turning to national and international news. NATO and General David Petraeus have both issued statements apologizing to the government and people of Afghanistan after nine Afghan boys were shot and killed by coalition forces and was being described as one of NATO's worst cases of mistaken identity. The boys were killed by collecting wood in the Kunar province of Afghanistan. The boys ranged in age 9 to 15. The tenth boy was wounded but is expected to fully recover. An investigation into the killings has been launched and Petraeus says, if warranted, disciplinary action will be taken but offered no real explanation as to why the children were killed. The International Criminal Court has officially opened an investigation into Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi and his regime's alleged crimes against humanity. Chief Prosecutor for the ICC, Luis Moreno Ocampo, says that he will be looking into the crimes occurring throughout the country after February 15th and that there will be no impunity for the North African country and its leader. Global food prices have reached a record high and could climb higher with the ongoing unrest in Libya. The UN says rising oil prices, increasing demand and poor harvests are to blame for the record food costs. Oil prices have reached a two and a half year high and have increased the cost of shipping and running farming equipment. The UN is concerned food prices could trigger riots like those in 2008 that occurred in 22 countries from Haiti to Bangladesh. The survival of the federal budget that will decide whether Canada goes to the polls this spring could rest with the NDP. The budget would require the support of one opposition party. Liberals in the Bloc Québécois have already announced their opposition. Finance Minister Jim Flaherty says the government's priority is to keep finances on the fiscal track it has established. The NDP has said it's looking for benefits for low-income seniors, tax relief for home heating bills, and measures to increase the number of family doctors in a new budget. And now with your sports news, here's Artis Akarian. Humber basketball players were honored last night at an award ceremony kicking off the OCAA championship tournaments being held at Algoma University and Algonquin College. From the women's team, Caitlin Pauly and Kayla Siriani were selected to the West Division second all-star team, while rookie Kara Barcevich was named to the West Division's all-rookie team. Michael Ashenpong was selected from the men's team as a West Division first team all-star, while Kern Lewis was chosen as Defensive Player of the Year in the West. Rookie coach Sean Collins walked away with West Division Coach of the Year. Yesterday, we reported the men's and women's basketball teams were tipping off last night in the OCAA Championships. The games will actually be played tonight. The men take to the court at 5 against the Seneca Sting at Algoma University, and the women will play at 6 against Georgian at Algonquin College. You can catch the games online at www.sportslive.ca. In pro sports, the Leafs were able to rally in the third period to force overtime against the Pittsburgh Penguins, winning 3-2. Falkessel scored to force OT, while Mikhail Grabowski found the back of the net in extra time, giving the Buds the win. Last night's win put the Leafs only four points out of the playoffs. The Leafs are in Philly tonight. Puck drops at 7. The Toronto Blue Jays won their first game of uh, spring training in Florida to the Tampa Bay Rays 5-4 on Wednesday. This was also the first win for the new Jays manager, John Farrell. John Diaz sealed the win when he hit a two-run single in the bottom of the ninth. The Bluebirds will play against the Pittsburgh Pirates today. FIFA officially confirmed today that the Women's World Cup is coming to Canada in 2015. Canada was only one of two contenders for the spot, but after Zimbabwe pulled out earlier this week, Canada was, well, the only choice. 
The Cricket World Cup is currently underway and Canada has taken a surprising lead over Pakistan during their match in Sri Lanka. The Canadian team is made up of many Pakistani expatriates. Okay, so, Pakistan uh, is playing without its Pakistan star fast spin. bowler, which could take Canada to the first win in the World Cup after being defeated by Sri Lanka and Zimbabwe. A victory by Team Canada would be a major upset for Team Pakistan as Canada is a tournament underdog. That's it for sports. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Arda. After the break, we'll get the latest in entertainment from Sarah Jacob. Gaga comes to Toronto, Justin Bieber sells his hair, and Charlie Sheen gets followed. Your entertainment update is coming up right after the break. <laughs> 